Okay, so this is probably going to be the most informal video I have ever done, but it has been a hot minute, and I know it's been nearly a month since I've posted. As you guys know, like it, like, as you guys know, because you're reading my mind, I Professor Xavier, do you? But I have been in LA, San Diego, all around the US for the last month. A lot of stuff came up. You really learn what you're made of when you're thrown out of your comfort zone and you don't have your go-to safety habits to fall back on. You really learn where the weaknesses are in your mind, where you're at, where your recovery's at, because it can be all well and good. You can be totally living the best recovered life in your little cul-de-sac, but that doesn't mean anything when you get booted out into the big bad world. And that is why I, that's why I don't believe in avoiding certain triggering phases. We should be able to speak about triggering topics and, and use any words around each other because when it comes into the real world, when it comes into a grocery store or conversation, just living your life out there, you can't control what people say, what people do. So the best way to start is just to start just to be open in a safe space like this. Sorry, my dog is dreaming and he's making the weirdest noises. I don't know if I should like wake him up. Oh, and that's Tinkerbell. She's a little whippet, by the way. They're like designed racing dogs, but she's so tiny. She's so tiny. Um, so yeah, I, I struggled a lot at one point during the, the vacation and I was like, am I relapsing? What is happening here? But I want to show them, okay, think about Nuna, no, no, you've got to go. There are some things that really helped me though, with my, no, no, I know, I know. I know you need love, but I've got to talk and help some people. You know, recovery is something you've got to put work into every day. And I want to show you guys some activities, some thoughts that actually really helped me and just changed my holiday around. I'm happier now than I'm just in such a happy, good space right now, and I just want to help you guys get there too now. If you've done my 30-day challenge on Instagram, you know about a lot of these activities. So let's get right into it, shall we? By the way, for those of you who don't know me, but late on in the video, my name is Jax. I make videos just pretty much documenting my eating disorder recovery, and the best thing is, well, the best thing, not really. It's not like I'm coming to you from a place of rainbows and sunshine where four years later, hey guys, I'm recovery, like recovered, here's my story. No, I pretty much document in real time processes. So one day, yes, I will give my sunshine and rainbow stories, but right now it's just the honest truth of the ups and the downs and the lefts and the brights and the everything. Little things that have really helped me over the last month when I was struggling was one, write shit down, okay? You may think, oh, I don't feel like writing anything down, I don't need to. No, trust me, you need to write things down because it is a different way of processing something when you actually write it in front of you. Now, whether you wanna type it or not, that's completely up to you. Personally, I'm someone that likes to write things down and then even have it on my window, on my wall. The first thing that helped me, like the first activity was writing down all the habits that keep me in my eating disorder. What habits, what behaviors, whether they're quasi type of recovery habits, write everything down from intermittent fasting to weighing yourself every day to do you count your calories? Do you buy specific brands of food that are the same every time? What are the things that are keeping you from pretty much, I'll say what are the handcuffs at the moment? The handcuffs stopping you from just feeling free and liberated and happy and just living then on the other side, and you might come up with a list of 50, of 30. I had quite a few surprisingly, some that I wasn't even aware of because even asking the people around you, what it, like say, what are habits you feel that still show that I have an eating disorder? What are habits that you feel that I'm really rigid on? And that'll help you out a lot just to get in perspective. And it's all about first. So first step is analysis. Second step. How do they make you better? Like how do they make, how do these habits make your life better? How do these lab habits make your life worse? How do they affect your relationships? Really look at what each of these habits do for you and see if the pros outweigh the cons. Because I'm sure at one point in your life you felt that they kept you safe. They, but now you probably feel that they keep you trapped. You probably feel like they suffocate you and that you can't breathe because you are just genuinely, like I say, a slave to these habits. Then I want you to write down, what would your life be like without these? What would your life be like if they didn't exist? 
What would it look like? How would it feel? Now think about that, how it would feel. Close your eyes, waking up, going through the perfect day of not having any of those habits. And then you're probably gonna take a deep breath and be like, holy shit balls, why? Why am I holding on to these? I know it, I know that type of epiphany and acknowledgement doesn't make letting go of them any easier, but it's a step. And we're all about stepping stones. The next thing is, what would the perfect day look like? I want you to write down what the perfect recovery day would look like in a day where you were living what you feel like would be your best life. Now, where do you wanna be in a year's time, six months time, whatever, what is your perfect day gonna look like? And then think about what are you gonna have to do to get to that perfect day? Then I want you to think about, like once you've done all of this, what would you have to gain from living that life to get to that perfect day? And what would you have to lose by living that life to get that perfect day? And then you've gotta ask yourself, is it worth it? The one thing keeping you in those complete, in that complete fearful, frustrated, prison-like mentality where your hands are handcuffed and you're watching everyone from a distance. You feel like you're at the cinema watching a movie. You're watching everyone else have fun, cheers at the dinner table, everyone else going reaching and trying that mozzarella stick and you just genuinely feel like a standby and you're thinking, how different would my life be if I was in the movie and not watching the movie? And That, my friends, is a whole different kettle of fish. And I know, okay, look, I know this because obviously someone that's living here, you're waiting for someone to offer you at the dinner table to go pick up the mozzarella stick. But let me tell you something. Everyone there is living their life. The only person not living their life is you because you're watching the movie. When you are later on down the line, you are going to regret watching the movie from a distance because you know what? When you watch the movie, you never get to actually know the characters in it. You never get to connect with them. Yeah, you might know who they are on paper, but it's a different type of connection when you share things with people. You share that mozzarella stick. You joke about how you all got food poisoning the next day from the, pr- the bad like prawns or the bad seafood. Yes, that has happened twice, and we don't need to talk about it, right? Ooh. No, Megan. No! No! Look away! Megan, no! Look away! <laughs> no. And the next day you want to joke about being hungover if you're over 21 folks in the US or if you're over 18 in the U in like Europe. The best day of my holiday wasn't the day that I felt the smallest or the day that I felt the safest with my food. The best day was the days that I ate and I shared and experienced things with my family at my brother's wedding, having that oh my gosh, Dolce de Leche wedding cake, where have you been all my life? And it was at the Grove in Los Angeles, with my mom and sister having the most amazing Italian meal I have ever had in my entire life. And then going to share ice cream after, trying a Brandy's donut. But like I said, it takes a lot of work and analysis to get there. And these are just little activities that I've picked up along the way that have really helped me. And I hope they help you guys. So for right now, just go back listen to the little tasks and activities, do them. I promise I am back here, back in Dubai. I wanted to really experience and be there with everyone. But now I did film a couple videos that I am editing there, which I'm super excited about. Oh, let's get excited and let's dance and jiggle. And I'm going to be editing them, putting those up. But before I put those up, I just wanted to put this out there for you guys and maybe help someone that needs it or just give you some advice or tips and tricks. If this was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. I am working on a cookbook at the moment for many more guidelines, many more recipes, just to help you guys in your recovery, to help you with that hair growth, to help you get your period back, to help you with osteoporosis. I'm gonna have a key and a guideline on each different recipe, which one's the best for specifically bones, hormones. I'm really excited to get that out to you guys. So if you have any questions again, just let me know down below. I love connecting with you guys and I'm gonna see you very, very soon in my next video.